Welcome, you guys, to the annual opening chapel. If you will please all rise to say the, to say the pledges. Hey, good morning. If you can look to the flag over here. It's really short. Sweet. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And could you guys please stay rising? Hello, everyone. If we could look over there to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. It's time. 
now it is my honor and privilege to introduce our speaker for the day, Dr. Hunter. Dr. Jerry C. Hunter, Jr. is native of Lancaster, South Carolina. He received an Associates of Arts degree from Wingate University. He also earned a bachelor's degree in business, a master's degree in counseling, and a second master's degree in business administration from Appalachian State University. Dr. Hunter received a PhD in educational administration from Duke University. Dr. Hunter has held a number of key administrative and teaching positions at Appalachian State University, Browder Community College, and the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. Dr. Hunter has received the Distinguished Alumni Award from both Appalachian State and Wingate University. In July 18, 2016, Dr. Hunter was recognized as the 2016 Distinguished Business Officer by the National Association of College and University Business Officers. The award is given annually to recognize outstanding achievement in the field of business and financial management in higher education. The Governor of South Carolina bestowed the Order of the Palmetto to Dr. Hunter in September 2009, the highest civilian honor. Since Dr. Hunter became President and Professor of Management at Charleston Southern University, enrollment has increased from 1,600 to 3,575. Alumni giving has increased by 500% and the endowment has quadrupled. Several new undergraduate and graduate academic programs and campus facilities have also been added during his tenure. Dr. Hunter is a nationally known leader and keynote speaker in higher education. His passion is encouraging students to find God's will for their lives and setting goals to reach their full potential. Dr. Hunter is married to Sissy Hunter from Lancaster, South Carolina. The Hunters have two grown children in the medical profession and four grandchildren. They're members of Somerville Baptist Church. Give it up for Dr. Hunter. Well, welcome everyone, and what a good group this is today. No rain, uh, no water coming over, and we're certainly mindful of all of those people in Houston and all the volunteers that are helping. So keep all of those dear people in your prayers. Is this a good day here, CSU? Uh, we have um, a room full of students, and over in the cafeteria, it's full with staff and coaches and students, and uh, what a blessing. Let's give CSU a big hand today. It's always a pleasure to uh, welcome our new students uh, and all the people that have worked diligently to help us uh, bring this new class in. Uh, we are good with enrollment. Uh, our attention is uh, very high, and we're blessed to have a campus full of great students. I'd like to recognize uh, some special guests today and friends. And if you're friends of the university, in a moment, I'm going to introduce Board of Trustees and former Board of Trustees and Board of Visitors and Board uh, Buccaneer Board members. So if you're just a friend here and a visitor, that's what I would like for you to do is, would you all stand that friends here of the university just visiting today? Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. We're glad to have you. Also, uh, let's recognize current and former Board of Trustees. If you would stand a moment and be recognized. Hey. And some, a group of students asked me last year, well, what do Board of Trustees do? I said, well, unfortunately, the first thing they do is hire and fire the president. Other than that, they set policy. So board of trustees are very special to me because they enable me to be your president. Now, board of visitors and buccaneer board members, let me tell you what these people do as well. These people provide those scholarship funds that almost every student sitting in this auditorium and in the cafeteria receive. We call them board of visitors, scholarship members because they give a minimum of a thousand dollars a year that goes directly to the students and so let's give them a big hand ask them to stand <laughs> uh, 
And do we have some Buccaneer board members? And these are loyal supporters of our athletic department. Let's rec them, recognize them if they would stand up. Buck board members. And yes, you're right. If we can, we, get, we try to get them to belong to both boards so we can get two scholarships or three or four for them. See, the idea of students is trying to plant this in your mind when you get your loans paid off in 2090. We want you to be one of these Board of Visitor members. Okay, another very special group is here today that we always honor are members of our Legacy Society. Now, a person that's a member of our Legacy Society has unselfishly included Charleston Southern in their will, in their financial planning. And so we have a lot of people here that have done that. So those of you who are members of our Legacy Society, please stand up and be recognized. Woo. Now, a word of encouragement to those of you uh, who are not members of the Legacy Society, which I hope you will be, our best count is that it will add at least 25 years to your life. If you put CSU in your will, I've known people that were 90 and they're living to be 130. You know, so uh, it will expand your lifespan to put CSU in your will. So that's a good thing, isn't it? Now, this is a very special recognition that, that we all want to pay tribute to. Now we have, as I'm told an hour ago, we have approximately 400 veterans and their families attending CSU. Would all of you involved in that please stand, students, members here that are involved with the Veterans and the <laughs> Veterans Association? Thank you very much. Okay, well, welcome everyone. Each year at Opening Chapel, we have pledged to our founders that we will present the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we are so proud to do that in our program today. Our founding principle of this university is taken from Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go ye therefore teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now that's the distinctive of our university and other good universities, other public universities, like the College of Charleston, the Citadel, the University of South Carolina, Clemson, Francis Marion, and on and on and on. This is our founding principle, you see, because we have a very clear distinctive. If we were just like the other universities, I doubt that anybody would be here because we're already paying subsidies for the public universities. So this is why we're here. We have a very clear distinctive with our founding principle. And students, as you graduate, this will be on your diploma. You will have the CSU logo on your diploma. Our mission is, is uh, promoting academic excellence in a Christian environment. This mission statement, those of you who are in business, you understand your mission in business or an organization is your purpose. This is why you exist. So this is why CSU exists to promote academic excellence in a Christian environment. Now, academic excellence, I would say that every one of you, that's primarily why you're coming to, to this university, but you get an added value of the Christian environment. And I will never quit reminding our faculty and our staff and our coaches of this excellence that they achieved about a year ago. Every 10 years, Every organization that wants to be accredited goes through a reaffirmation process, reaffirming 
accreditation. Well, our faculty and staff and coaches went through our 10-year reaffirmation two years ago, talking about academic excellence. When the committee came and visited our university, interviewed our people, read our self-study, checked our financials, checked our academic curriculum, checked our co-curricular activities, the way they evaluate a school is based on the number of recommendations for improvement. Now, those of you who are gonna be graduating, please make a note of this when you apply for jobs. Your university received zero recommendations for improvement in academic excellence. I want to give everybody a hand. The importance of that is in a competitive world where you're going to be teachers and lawyers and doctors and going to med school, uh, what if your university was not accredited? Well, you wouldn't want a diploma from that school. What if it was known to have 40 recommendations for improvement? You see, our people here have really worked hard to be excellent, not only in academics, but in providing a Christian environment. Every person who takes a job here is asked to give their personal testimony with Jesus Christ. What is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Not what your uncle did and not how many mission trips you've been on, and that's a good thing. How many soup kitchens you've worked in, and that's a wonderful thing. But what is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ? And we find that year after year, a lot of good people and a lot of good students have never dealt with that question. What is my personal relationship with Jesus Christ? And that's what we ask every person who comes to work here. Now, that doesn't mean we're better than anybody else. We have a distinctive, and we want to hold true to that distinctive. So, already... This first week of school, which was one week past, I believe we've had 47 students accept Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I remember my mother and father told me, said, you know, get things in order in life first. First, get your salvation, then get your education, and then get your profession. So think about that. You have the chance today, every day, to get your salvation straight. You're going to be working on your education and your profession, but what if you don't get to number two and three? Well, get that salvation squared away today. Our vision at CSU is to be a Christian university nationally recognized for integrating faith and learning, leading, and serving. That means we're integrating the Christian perspective in everything we're doing. On Saturday, about 4 o'clock, on national TV, watch the Buccaneers playing Mississippi State. And watch what they're going to be doing, even though the cameras will not like to show that. They will. They'll show our football team and our coaches having prayer under the goalpost and after the game. Now, if we tried to buy that advertisement for the Christian university, we couldn't come up with enough million dollars to buy it. But you see, our team and our coaches are going to be living out the Christian faith even on national TV, on ESPN. I salute all of our athletic programs and coaches for that. We're going to have some very exciting, dynamic testimonies this morning from one student, Solomon Brown, an alumni, Victoria McManame, and an alumnus, Brian Morton. Solomon, come on up. This is number, number 34. 
on the football team. Thank you. <laughs> All right, my name is Solomon Brown, and I'm going to share just part of my testimony with y'all. All right, so one day I was just walking outside the chapel here, uh, and I never walked this way because I was going to be a little late to class. Um, and as I was walking, somebody yells my name. And I'm like, okay, it has to be one of the guys on the football team probably messing with me. So I'm looking, and I look around, and I see this girl walking towards me. And her name is Eltiana. And she, I've seen her before, maybe like my freshman year, uh, but never really talked to her and really had no reason to be yelling my name. So uh, she comes up to me, and she's real shy, and she's like, and she's, and she's talking to me, and she says, I have a message for you. And I'm like, all right, and? And she goes, Jesus told me to tell you that nothing in this world will fill the hole that you have. And I was like, what? And it like, it really shook me up. And I was like, she's right. Like, I've been trying to fill this hole in my heart and my soul with earthly things. Uh, I'm too busy. I have football, I, I'm a good football player, I have all these accolades, like everybody knows me, likes me, whatever. But that was temporary joy. And I couldn't stop thinking about it the rest of the day, the rest of the weekend. And it sent me running towards Christ. And coming to realize that Christ is our true and only one joy that we can have in this world. And when she said that to me, it was a wake-up call. And I was really needing it because I was lost. I was just walking and just doing the same old things, going to class, going to practice. But I wasn't giving myself over to Christ like I should have. And I'm just here to tell y'all and pray for y'all that Jesus comes into y'all's lives and wrecks you and brings you to your knees and sends you running towards Jesus Christ, our Savior, because he gave our, his life for us, and the least we can do is give our lives back to him. All right, thank you. I honestly think that the reason why I chose CSU I wanted somewhere where it was like I could be a part of something, some people to call family, you know, somewhere to call home, and CSU became that for me. To be at a university where you can live out your faith and the impact that it has on other people is just incredible, and I'm a testament to that. You know, I'm someone who came here and didn't know the Lord, and now I'm a senior getting ready to graduate, and CSU's given me the ability to learn how to integrate my faith in every aspect that I do, and especially nursing. What a great way to give to my patients, being able to pray with them. A value that CSU's given me that I wouldn't have gotten anywhere else is understanding that my purpose isn't solely about me. It's not about me at all, that it's so much greater and it's so much bigger. What I'm doing here matters. What you do every day matters. Your education matters. It's not gonna matter where it's gonna take you. What matters is knowing that the Lord's gonna take it and use it that's gonna build his kingdom. If he's called you to something, he's gonna see you through it. It's gonna be so much easier if you just open your hands and are willing to wherever it is he wants to lead you. You're gonna experience the call in your life that you might not have anywhere else. Understand that this life is so much bigger than yourself. You're gonna have people that are gonna wanna walk beside you. You're gonna have teachers that are gonna encourage you and you're gonna have a community and a family here. I worked at um, the Metanoia Leadership Academy, which is for young students in like the Spruill Avenue area in North Charleston. It was a normal day and I just got to work. So students were coming in and I started hearing something that was like, it sounded like a firecracker. And what it was was a 22 caliber pistol. So I looked out my window and I saw someone getting shot. And a few of my students that were there earlier was watching as the person was getting shot also. So once it happened, I simply um, guarded my students and had them sit down 
and I controlled my classroom first and then went downstairs to check on other students that were coming to the program. Maybe when I was younger, the old me would say, pack up and go and focus on yourself because your safety is number one. But in this instance, that wasn't even close to my mind. What CSU did was it helped me mature at a faster rate to where I reacted differently than I think I would have maybe four years ago or when I was fresh out of high school. And so I was able to put myself out of the equation and think about the students. I came to CSU for a reason. I came here for growth because I knew myself and I knew what my weaknesses were. You know if somebody graduates from CSU, you know what the work ethic would look like. You know exactly kind of like where their mindset is. And so that itself is a gift that is given if you matriculate through CSU. For somebody that needs to find their purpose, it's very important. Me personally, mine is service. I found out that I was pretty good at service. Once you find that, it enhances everything else in your life. Remember why you came to college. Understand that there are things in life that are way bigger than what you're doing right now. And so as long as you understand what is expected of you from within, like what is intrinsic, then you'll be successful. Wow, how proud we are of these people. As we move forward, I want to take a moment to recognize a couple more very special people to CSU and to me. One is the First Lady. Sissy Hunter, who's been with me for 33 years at CSU. She's one of those full-time, non-paid employees. The other person here is Dr. Ken Bonnet, who was our academic officer for 140 years. And Dr. Bonnet, stand up, and a chemistry professor, he's back visiting with us, and we're always glad to have him. Our message today is the same message that I hope you'll share with someone when you leave here today. It's the steps to find peace with God. And all of you should have been given one of these little pamphlets. If you don't have one, we have one for you. Just take it out as we walk through this message today. You never know when you leave here to go back to your classroom or your residence hall room or to work or on your way home when you're going to be confronted with a person who is their last chance to talk to somebody. And I would want to have this to share with them if they really are uncertain about whether they're going to be here tomorrow and you are the only person with them, you will see what a valuable document this could be. And we all could be caught in this same situation. And so we want you to have this to take with you and keep with you. We're going to talk about God's desire. We have a problem in our world, but God's built us a bridge, and he gave, gave us a plan of salvation. And he wants us to live for him like these students and our alumni have been talking about. So... What are we talking about? God's desire is we have peace and purpose through our personal relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. Now, everything we should be talking about right now is biblically based. It's not from some program we heard on television or some lecture we went to or some talk show. This is the biblical references to God's desire. Romans 5.1 says, We have peace with God through Lord Jesus Christ. We heard Solomon's testimony. This is a very outstanding young man. Academically, athletically, he is very good. But you heard him say, that he did not have peace. He did not have it all together until he recognized Jesus Christ was to be in charge of everything. John 3, 16, 
This is the verse that I have shared with many people, students who were in the hospital in an accident or just had a brain aneurysm right before you didn't know what was going to happen next. If you're not sure they're a believer, it's real clear right here, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one son and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 10:10, 10, 10, and this is what I was talking about a while ago. Good works are wonderful, and I wish I had done a lot of more good works in my life. Now, here's what the Bible says about e eternal salvation, that I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. So you do good works after you accept Christ. That's why you do the good works. And so our problem, what's our problem then? If all of this is so good, well, our problem started with Adam and Eve when they disobeyed God by eating the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. Sin came into the world and separated man and woman from God. As you can see, the illustration. It was a broken relationship. Isaiah 59, 2 said, It's your sins that separate you from God. Romans 3, 23 says, All have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So we're all human. We've all sinned. Our ancestors have sinned. But there's hope. God built us a bridge. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes through the Father except through me. Now, that's what I was talking about a while ago. I talked to lots of students, and I said, tell me about your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. They tell me their aunt plays the organ in the First Presbyterian Church. Their grandfather was a pastor of the certain church in Dallas, Texas. Those are wonderful things for your family. Oh, I went to vacation Bible school every summer. Those are wonderful things to do. But I say, but tell me about your personal relationship with Jesus Christ, your grandmother and your aunt, and those people aren't going to be with you the rest of your life. And so they begin to realize, I've got some searching to do. Because remember John 14, 6. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. So there's the bridge. Jesus Christ, when we accept him as our personal Savior, we have that bridge to God. And let me say, those of you who are in business and in insurance business, that's permanent life insurance. Permanent. It's not term insurance. You've got it. Now you go do your soup kitchens and you do your mission trips and then you do all those good things that perhaps you've already been doing, but now you're doing it for this purpose. So how do we, how do we, how do we become this believer that the, the gospel teaches about? Well, we have a choice. Some of us in this room today will make a choice not to accept Christ. You see, we have that choice. We can reject Christ, or if we admit we're a sinner, we turn from our sins, repent, say, I'm sorry. And we believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, and he rose again, and then we pray to invite Jesus in our heart. The Bible says... In Romans 10, 9, here's what the Bible said. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, what does the Bible say? You will be what? Say. You know, this is such a simple plan that a lot of people just miss it. Now, if you believe in the Bible, here's what the Bible says. If you don't believe in the Bible then you believe in somebody or something else. But here's what the Bible said. It's a simple plan of salvation. 
I encourage everyone to, to consider this. And the prayer that is very commonly prayed is, Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, which we all are. And I ask you forgiveness, which we all should. I believe you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. I turn my sins, I turn from my sins and I invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Exactly what you heard in the testimony. In Romans 8, 39, and this is what I, I really have based my life on. Because you all have challenges, uncertainties. Look at what's going on in Houston. Look at what we're so uncertain about, the economy, our safety, everything in our life, your health, and a lot of you, your finances. But here's what the Bible teaches and God promises. In Romans 8, 39, no power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, isn't that a lifetime promise? Well, see, the only way you can have that promise fulfilled is to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior personally. So I think it's a wonderful, I think it's a wonderful plan for life, a wonderful purpose, a wonderful outcome, an outcome of hope and security. So once we accept Christ, here's what, is, here's what we should try to live out our life doing. Study our Bible, which I know all of you will be doing that at CSU, praying, fellowship with believers, let Christ guide your life, share the gospel with somebody else, and you have a little booklet to do that with. You can just give it to a friend. I've had a number of students say, I just gave my booklet to a friend at school here, and then they called me back about three weeks later, said, we want to talk to you and pray with you. And they accepted Christ. It wasn't any big revival, any big blast that went on. It was the gospel was shared and the Holy Spirit saved somebody. See how simple that is? And wouldn't you like to be credited for sharing the gospel with someone that would be facing some uncertainty in life? So get involved with campus ministry. All of you know John Davis. Is John here? Where's John? John Davis. Woo! John and his team, and Brittany, where is Brittany? Brittany's here someplace. So Brittany and John, they're, they're on the run for you all the time, and they will pray with you and love you. Okay, as we conclude our service today, our chapel, what have we learned? We've learned that CSU is a great place to be because we have a distinctive of promoting academic excellence in a Christian environment. We have a great place because of our students and our faculty. And if you have some request today, you would like someone to pray with you or someone to answer questions, here's our message board right here. You can contact that. That time, Dr. This time, Dr. Michael Bryant will give our benediction. It's been good to worship together. Can we show our appreciation to the choir and to the orchestra? Would you show our appreciation to them, all their hard work? Thank you for leading us in worship this morning. Thank you guys very much. It has been good to worship together. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, as we close, we want to remember those struggling in Texas and the surrounding states due to Hurricane Harvey. We also want to pray for the family of Kwame Kreku. He was a 2010 grad, and he was uh, in a drowning accident recently. He played football for CSU. So we want to pray for his family, for this uh, graduate. And we also want to pray that God would be honored in our relationships with one another throughout this year. Would you pray with me? Father, we're thankful this day for this time of worship that you've given us. God, we're thankful for those who have led us in worship. Lord, those who have brought us to you and those who have shared the word. Uh, through preaching, or Lord, also through testimony. God, I pray that the words that have been shared, Lord, would touch the heart of each of us 
and that your spirit would draw us to you. God, I know that there are students here who know you as Savior and Lord. God, would you help them to be bold to share the love of Jesus and the gospel of Jesus Christ with those around them? God, there are also others here who don't know you. Lord, maybe Christianity is something new to them. Maybe they're just considering who this Jesus is. I pray, God, that you, God, that you would draw them to you. And Lord, that you would help them to see that you're real. God, that you love them and that you want a personal relationship with them. Father, we do pray for those who are suffering in another part of the country today, in Texas and the surrounding states. And God, we pray for the first responders. We pray for those who are ministering. We especially pray for the Christians who are there trying to share the gospel and to show the love of Jesus. Lord, may we not just pray for them, but ask ourselves, Lord, how we as a university might help and minister and to serve these people. Father, I also pray for the family of Kwame, Lord. God, they're suffering at this time. I pray for your mercy, for your peace, Lord. I pray that your comfort would be with them. And Father, I pray, Lord, for us as a family, as a CSU family. Lord, may we seek to honor you in our relationships with one another. God, may we look to those who are hurting, to those who are struggling. And God, may we seek to offer help. God, to the ones who are confused, we pray, Lord, that you might help us to share words of wisdom. And God, to the ones that don't know you, we pray that we would share the gospel faithfully and in love. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. Thank you.